Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 26, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany, teaching virtually in London, England. Jan, who resides in the Czech Republic, uh, took a closer look at the state of SPF records for Czech domains. SPF records have been uh, quite commonly used for quite a few years now and are intended to designate certain mail servers as being authorized uh, to send mail for a particular domain. The main purpose of SPF records is uh, to reduce and aid in spam filtering, but it has also some security implications by limiting the mail servers that may be used uh, to send email for a particular domain and making it a little bit easier to filter out spoofed email. Of course, one risk of deploying SPF is if you don't do it correctly, then you may cause legitimate email to be rejected by various spam filters. So a little bit surprising that Jan found that out of the 1.4 million Czech domains registered on the day in August when he did the test, 1.1 million had SPF records deployed, so about 80% of the domains and only a very small number of them actually had a common uh, weak configuration, the question mark all directive, which uh, would essentially sort of disable the SPF record and is typically only used uh, as you start to deploy SPF in order uh, to uh, gain some confidence in having it configured correctly. Now, in a discussion on Twitter, uh, Jan also uh, pointed out that some of this may also be due to lots of these domains, of course, over the last year or so being moved uh, to Outlook 365, which does encourage and uh, ease the deployment of SPF uh, somewhat. And that in itself uh, may be caused uh, by an overall, of course, migration uh, to cloud services, but also by the increasing difficulty in running on-premise exchange servers securely. And we do have a new version of OpenSSL fixing two vulnerabilities with a rating of high. The first one is an ASN.1 vulnerability that uh, could lead to a denial of service. The second one, is triggered when decrypting SM2 encrypted data. Typically, you should expect here also a denial of service. There may be some cases, as it states here, where some application behavior could be altered. Not clear if this could lead to arbitrary code execution, but doesn't look like it's a straightforward vulnerability to exploit. So I would recommend a wait for respective updated packages to be delivered for the particular OpenSL distribution that you are using. So not an emergency, just a regular patch and applied like any other patches. And F5 patched a number of vulnerabilities in its big IP products. Many of the vulnerabilities are rated high, which usually means they're privilege escalation vulnerabilities and require some form of authentication. Now, there is one vulnerability that's also described as a privilege escalation vulnerability and requiring authentication, CVE 2021-23031. But F5 specifically notes that this vulnerability is critical if you are running big IP in appliance mode, which apparently is a rarely selected configuration. So if you're one of those users, you definitely want to prioritize this update. And Thibaut Pasili and uh, Mathieu Tartar at We Live Security have a real nice write-up about a backdoor they recently uh, came across that they call Sidewalk. Sidewalk appears to be a further development of an earlier backdoor known as Crosswalk and has some interesting behavior as to how to hide and uh, how to evade detection. For example, it will use some benign domains in order to establish a connectivity and whether or not a proxy is being used. It also uses Google Docs for a basic configuration. Interesting here also that uh, the way they configured this Google Docs document is that anybody could modify it. 
But by using Google Docs, of course, it's much easier sort of to hide in the noise of normal network traffic. Now, the command control server seems to be communicated using an IP address. So if you are alerting on connections to IP addresses that were not preceded by a DNS resolution first, then you may have a chance to detect some of this traffic, lots of other sort of indicators uh, in the write-up. So I highly recommend that you take a closer look and uh, look at how uh, this backdoor works. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. If you like this podcast, please share it, uh, like it on social media, and talk to you again tomorrow.